Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are hearing your voice is, because you called and you answered the question, we want to hear your bad neighbor slash roommate horror stories. Give us a call and share your story at one eight 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 earpod one Yeah. You know, I've, I've had some neighbors. I have neighbors. In the past, on this show, you have discussed some, you got into some In thickness detail. with your neighbors. You got into the deep end of yes. strife. Uh, we will not recount that in detail, uh, but yes, if, when I moved into my current home, my neighbor that was really my only neighbor that we like, sh- you know, had contact with, and, like physical contact, like we shared a fence with them. Your 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 the, lands. Had the contact. way that my house is situated, they're really the only neighbor that you can really like have a yeah. fence with and stuff. But anyway, yeah, we had a tree dispute, a bush dispute. There was uh, there was a bunch of arguing that went back and forth. Uh, because you basically planted a palm tree on their land, but right next to your driveway. Yeah, after we talked about cutting down a bush that was theirs. Anyway, we had coffee and we straightened it out and now we give each other Christmas gifts. But uh, what, re- so what was the, the, what is the long-term takeaway? It's been so long since that, like, well, what, what is the, th- is it that what I buy tell him people, a bottle of wine? Well, what I tell people on a, uh, on the reg, when they t- begin telling me their neighbor stories, is I say, you gotta nip that neighbor situation in the bud. Yep. Because you cannot abide in this way where you've got some dis- ongoing dispute. It's not, it's not, life is too short to be in an ongoing dispute with your neighbor. Even if what they are saying and doing, in my case, I thought that, is unreasonable. I was like, I don't care how unreasonable th- this is. I don't care who's right and who's wrong. In my the mind, you were wrong, I- but keep going. <laughs> oh, you, 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 oh you, you love to throw me under the bus. I was not wrong by, go back by, and by a it. long shot. But that's my, that was my takeaway. Uh, it was but, pretty simple. But the, the point being that it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. It really doesn't matter. I hear that. Reconciliation is the most important thing. That's the right that you're looking for when you're in a neighbor situation. Now, somebody might be unwilling to compromise, but as I told you in the previous story, which has been years now, when I sat down at a coffee shop with my neighbor, he immediately began to weep. That's right. Because he knew that he was in the wrong. Okay, yeah, okay. I've forgotten that part. Yeah, yeah. so thanks when a lot, per- Link. When the person's crying, that's uh wow you you broke him you didn't cry, uh, no I didn't ha I had nothing to cry about <laughs> yeah well it, the you talk about nipping in the bud but to me just to skip to like the final analysis here if you have any opportunity to like build some positive rapport with a neighbor do it that's why when people move in next to you. You give them cookies, you welcome to the neighborhood, you give them a little welcome package or something, you introduce yourself. There's, then you don't have to worry about, when are we gonna meet? What circumstances are we gonna meet under? And is it gonna be when I have to confront them about something like these voicemails we got? Yeah, or like you're, oh, I'm doing some work on my house and they're a nosy neighbor and they're gonna come over to see if I've got the, I pulled the right permits and stuff. You know. Right. That happens all the time in California. Yeah, it happened. It happened with us. With we never knew which neighbor it was. Yeah, you got. We have ended a up good having to like situation. Spend thousands of dollars doing stuff we didn't plan on doing. But you have a, you have a good situation in your neighborhood. I do. My cul-de-sac, we, right there, all around the end, we all know each other and party together a couple of times a year, and we've got well, sometimes a little too hard. Is Christi, what I heard. Yep, Christie's on a text thread with some of those people. I'm not on that text thread. That's where I draw the line. You can get hammered in a cul-de-sac though. Oh man, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's only like, one way out. Yeah, right. It's like, it's really hard to get hurt. Like, it's really hard to get run over in a cul-de-sac. Yeah, that's right. You know, because it's just like, it's just, well, it's just the end of the road. So you don't get hammered by a car. I'm just saying. You can get, ham- get hammered. A cul-de-sac, a place where a road terminates surrounded by homes, 
it just feels like a place that you can just lose yourself. You know? Oh, yeah. Let it all hang out. We did, man. Yeah, yeah it's like- You can't you, do that on a thoroughfare. And you know it, what I'm saying? Nope. You, you gotta do that in a place where, listen, you saw this, and if you're gonna tell somebody about it, we're not gonna let you leave. And we can all keep you here because it's just one way out. Yep. It's about barricading. If you live on a highway, you can't get away with anything. Um, and then it, the, the cul-de-sac, then it, it extends, it curves around and then it extends to the main road. So like one of the things we discussed at our last party was how um, this was not me talking either. It seems like something I would say in a group to make, see how everybody reacted. But one of my neighbors said, yeah, we're in the balls of the street. And then you kind of drive down the shaft of the street to get out to the uh, to the main thoroughfare. Uh, those are pretty little balls if you go to those proportions. Well, it's basically it's a, it's just a, the cul-de-sac is a nut sack. I understand the analogy. I'm just saying that if I were to take an overhead view of your street, knowing about how long it is, the balls are proportionately those small. Are, it's very cold in that cul-de-sac. If you know what I'm saying, cold. It's sack. very cold. That's, That's why like, it's called that. A cold sack. Oh, it's very shriveled you at the figured end. Figured it out. Yeah, I got a good. You live at the shriveled small end of the sack with my neighbors. There was this whole thing about my window from my shower giving me a vantage point to my neighbors, which then I talked to them about it, and it's like I want to make a video about this. They were super cool about it. You know, uh. they've since put up a fence that then kind of <laughs> makes it a little more difficult for me to see them They're drive to work cool on about showering. It, and since then they have put up a barricade. Yeah. <laughs> on the other side, we got new neighbors and they're below me and there's that wall. This is the guy who threw you, a, threw you something off his grill. No, no, no. That's the guy, that's my, that's my backside neighbor. I'm talking about my other side neighbor. Uh. My backside neighbor, I saw him uh, on a walk with the dogs a week ago and I was like, Hey, I'm Link. I'm your, I'm your neighbor up there, and he was like, "Oh yeah," and he made the motion. <laughs> He's like, "I threw it." What of did he th throwing the meat? What did he throw? What kind of meat? Um, like a hero meat on a shish kebab. He took it off the a morsel. A morsel. He took like a handful. I threw the morsel. He yeah. So he made the he made the throwing this is the motion. Morsel he, motion. Was like, he was like, "Oh yeah." He was like, "Next time, come on down." Uh, he was oh he he was baiting you and I. Yeah, and I remember his name now. That's the other thing. Write down your neighbor's names. Like I put in my phone, person's name, and then I put neighbor. So then when I can't remember my neighbor's name, I just search my neighbor. address book for neighbor. Yeah, And it's like all my neighbors from all the years come up. You gotta make a good, you gotta start on a positive foot because inevitably there will be conflict as we see. And with my new side neighbor, there's that uh, center block wall, and walls then, are trouble. If you look, who owns them? I own the wall. Uh, but you, how do you really know? Because I do. And yeah, then I look you, over the but wall. They probably think the same thing. And they've done all types of landscaping once they moved in, including planting trees that line the wall on their side, so they don't have to look at the back side of my wall. Yeah, they can look at the trees they planted. Center block. Christy wasn't happy with what they planted. I wish they would have asked me what type of thing to plant, I could have helped them come up with something better. And I'm like, well, the only thing I'm worried about is the fact that these trees that they planted are gonna, are, grow. Are gonna keep going up and up and up. And when I sit at my dining room table and I look out that side window, I can see a little bit of the mountains. And what, I don't wanna see a of, point blank range tree. What, is it like those very typical like California, like they're gonna get really tall and they look like they might be evergreen, like no, bushes it, that just keep going straight up? It's a, it's small, it's a smaller, um, I would call it, it's a tree, but it kind of has a. A bush-like quality. A bush-like quality. But I can I could already tell when they first planted it. I was like, there's a few that are higher, and like I'm sitting there looking out my window, and and I, my, my vantage point of the mountain is being threatened from a seated height by these freshly planted tree things. Uh, so if I you said, need somebody to come over and put, like accidentally be like wielding a, uh, what is it, a scythe? A scythe, yeah. And like, oh, the tall guy a came Sith. over, the Sith, the tall guy Sith came Lord. over. Sith Lord. I could come over, here, this is it, this is the plan. Halloween night, I make a great Grim Reaper, I bring my Sith, or scythe? Scythe. You know what I'm talking about. 
and uh, I'm just having a grand old time. It's a cul-de-sac, so I get a little hammered, and I start <laughs> swinging that thing around, and I just cut the tops of their bushes off. And I do it every Halloween. Oh, it's uh, a way to keep it controlled. I appreciate the offer, but I've already taken care of it. Oh, snap! <laughs> yeah, it was under the cover of darkness. <laughs> um, because it's on my, like my side, there's the wall which is like four and a half feet tall, maybe even five feet tall. And then there's like another foot of tree that's now on top of that. And it's right there at my eye level, my hand level when I like, if I say if I had clippers in my hand, mm -hmm. like some sort of landscaping shears, let's just say I did. Right. Let's just say it was dark. Oh gosh. And let's just say from my side, it's just it's just right there conveniently, snip, 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 snip. From their side, the top of those trees is probably uh, seven or eight feet. Oh really? Because their their plot is lower than mine. So I tried to to snip off every single one in a very natural. Un uneven natural pattern. Yeah, this is just nature taking So it doesn't just look like I just went across the top like epic rap battle of manliness opening uh, scene. Yeah. You know, so I got it, but I, I did that like six weeks ago. I already have to do it again. Under the cover of darkness, you wanna come over? We could, we could get in ninja You're, suits. You are trimming your neighbor's bushes at night. Just to keep them at the right level. I mean, yeah. and they, they can't they get any taller. Well, you might be, in some way, you might be creating bonsai. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you keep a tree from growing, I, I thought you were gonna other say, things start happening. I, no, that's not gonna happen. Well, I, I thought you were gonna say, maybe you're creating, maybe you're doing your neighbor a favor, which is how I am looking at it. I can conveniently trim their tree Hold on, Without you, them even having to pay somebody. Do you hold, do you grasp the bush and trim it so you keep the, the trimmings on your side? Hell yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so, who do you think I am? So all the evidence is on oh, your side. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, I have yeah. a, and if, you know what? If they happen to get curious and notice and like maybe I see them in passing and they're asking about like, uh, do These you? These trees are supposed to be 16 feet tall now. If they ask me about it, I'm gonna say, I don't know. That would be a lie but I will say that, I'm going to lie. Ooh. And I'm, I'm gonna say, I don't know, but I haven't noticed, maybe I'm, maybe my landscapers are, are trimming that just as a courtesy to you. Uh, you could say, I, I'm, a, I'm, a sleep, I'm a sleep trimmer. You know, so it's like I don't remember doing it, but, but I, I might but do I it. But I only trim bushes while sleepwalking, it's, it, including my own. I'm not, what I'm doing isn't right, and I'm not proud of it. I don't know. But but I'm not. It is against the law, probably technically. I'm not. I don't think you can touch your neighbor's bush without consent. Prepared to do anything else? Like I'm not prepared to do the right thing, which I don't even want to know what that is. But unless you want to tell me, I mean, what's the right thing to do here? Talk to my neighbor, Mr. F. I mean, we do know each other. We're on a first name basis. We met at a cul-de-sac party right when they moved in. And, but they really, they really keep to themselves. Okay, have you looked at the bushes from their perspective? No, you want me to sneak into their backyard and look back up? So it's the backyard. It's the backyard. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't think they would mind, but I don't wanna take the risk to ask Okay, them. this is what I would do if I were you. I would get a selfie stick, okay? Mm -hmm. Approximately 10 feet long. Uh, you got to do this when they're at daytime, when they're not there, and you uh, put your your phone on wide angle, and you stick it into their backyard and get a look at what their perspective of their bushes would be. If you're not going to be helpful, <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. Way, you're wasting my time. I'm not kidding. That's step one. So you actually can appreciate, like, oh, yeah, totally fine. If you get down there and you're like, oh no, this is I'm ruining this from their perspective. I, which I don't think is the case. I just think you gotta confirm because then I do think you go to them. And uh, the, the, fact that you, the fact that you've been trimming already, uh, I'm just saying if you wanna do the right thing, I'm not saying this is what you should do, I'm saying if you wanna do the right thing, I think the thing that I would do is I would keep trimming the bushes at night and just, it would probably never become a thing. Yeah. Which is probably what you're gonna do. But if you wanna do the right thing. I'm a night bush boy. I would, I would go and I would say, hey, um, I'm a, I wanted to talk about your bushes. Uh, you know, 
I I feel like if we just let them keep growing, it's really gonna obstruct our view, but I my assumption is that you guys don't really care <laughs> that they that they need to get taller than you know the seven or eight feet that they are and kind of covering you know I'm sure it's just kind of beautifying your experience in the back and you're not looking at a cinder block wall, um you know I didn't want to come over without asking so I did stick a selfie stick over the fence and I I know what it looks like from your perspective in my in my mind it looks I great just, I, I here's I, the video I think the chances the only risk is that. They want it to grow taller because from their vantage point, they want to block something that is currently being seen. You won't know what that is unless you do the selfie stick method. You, you need a, the, the key I could to get winning an to argument is knowing everything that the opponent is thinking. Everything about their perspective. You basically need to steel man their argument, not straw man. I know what I'm gonna do. Bush man. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick a time when they're not there. I'm going to throw a ball into their pool. Oh. In the backyard. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna knock on the door. When nobody comes to the door, I'm gonna go into the backyard of their house and I'm gonna retrieve my ball. Okay. And while I do, I will have the perfect vantage point, even if they have cameras. I'll just get my ball. I'll just get my ball and looking at your Yeah, we hedges. saw you on camera aiming for our pool. <laughs> <laughs> because the bushes are too short, and they didn't block. They right. didn't block it. They're gonna get you on camera. That, this, get, there's, that's the weakness in this plan. I'm, now I'm gonna get Lando to do it. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna bring a child into this. Yeah, our, our our child is strange. He just he loves to throw balls. Do you want to out come of over boundaries? No, you're too tall. And then I'm gonna uh, look, and I'll know. I'll if dress as the Grim Reaper. To, if there's something to block, and then if there's nothing to block vertically, then I'm just gonna keep night night trimming. What about your pool equipment? Do you think that they're blocking your pool equipment? Uh, yeah, but that's not an issue. It's lower. Because that's below the it's wall. It's lower. But yeah. So I'm just gonna do them what I think is a favor and if I get back into a corner and I have to admit to it, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work my link charm, you know? I've never been punched in the face. Well, I just, And I've deserved it a lot. One small thing, way, way I kind of relate to this. Let is, me know, hashtag your biscuits, by the way. Is I, is I uh, you know, we've kind of like, Mm, or one eight eight earpod one. Yes, we know. Please let me know. Uh, the, I've kind of landscaped a little area there uh, next to my home. Yes, you and know. I have. Uh, I've entered. I've crossed the boundary. It's not your land. I'm ten feet into the next yard, but it's an empty lot, and we're just like eh, nobody lives there. It, 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 that's fine. fine. But you did the right thing. But one of the things, and there's also like after a while, it becomes my land. I don't know how many years it is in California. But after a while, I get it just right. because I've staked my claim. Eminent domain. That's not. But we have a little bench that we've set up there to kind of like. I'll go out there and have you have you sat on my bench? I haven't. Yeah, we have a little bench over there now that you can watch the sunset. You can look over the whole neighborhood. It's wonderful. Huh. I have a glass of wine. Haven't done that yet, but I've definitely thought about it. But there, keep a box of wine underneath the bench. There's one tree. Oh, yep. About two, like two roads away. That's a pretty large tree, it's pretty tall. You know and what, say no more. Yes, I will help you chop down this tree. No, no, this is my plan. So I think that it may be maxed out. I have no morality when it comes to landscaping other people's well, homes. Well, trees don't have souls. I think that this tree um, is done, might be done growing, but I'm keeping a really close eye on it. And, it's, yeah. and, and, and if it isn't done growing, it could obstruct my view of the sunset. Here's my plan because I'm sure these people are proud of this tree. I'm gonna get into archery, okay? And I'm going to poison the tip of a arrow <laughs> with some sort of like, like a like a beetle colony. Oh no, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna horrible. put like a egg sac of a beetle, of a, of a tree killing beetle. And I'm gonna aim at the trunk from a distance, in the, co at the cover the, of night. I'll be- All the I'll damage you're gonna do when you miss. No, no, I'm, oh, first of all, again and again, I'm, gonna be for be I'm, gonna I'm gonna train for months. To, this is, I get one shot at this, and I'm gonna have, it's, uh, at the cover of night, I will be dressed as the Grim Reaper, and I will have on night vision goggles, and I'll be sitting on my bench, and I will aim at the trunk of that tree. It'll be a, probably a crossbow, because you can aim a little bit better at a crossbow with a beetle colony on the tip. Goes right into the, they'll never know what hit the tree. Because it'll also be a, 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 a disintegrating arrow. A disintegrating arrow. Right. An arrow. Don't forget an, that. An arrow that biodegrades quickly, very quickly.
No, on it's, impact. It's a wooden arrow that the beetles eat once they're, it's the first thing the larvae eat when just, they come to life. Just make the wo- arrow look like a tree limb. Even better idea. Right. Full of, we're full It'll be of, so high up, it's gonna be like something. 60 feet in the air. Not They'll, a good idea. Well, we don't know what happened to that tree, but when it finally fell, what, there was an arrow in what's it. What's the problem part of the tree, though? The top. Well, here's what I think you should it's do. It's not a problem yet, but it might be one day. Yeah. What I think you should do is you should approach those people and say, I would like, you explain your situation and you say, I would like to pay for your trees to be trimmed. That's something that we all have to do. I would like to cover the cost of that whenever you do it next time. And all I'm asking is that they also top off the tree, which is something that they do. It helps them keep the trees uh, healthy. A lot of trees in our area, if you'll notice, especially like those pines. They got bad tops. They top them off. So they have a blunt top because when you're when you're there, when it's in your yard, you never, that, that has no impact on you. Right, you can't it, see the But it, I think it helps the health of the tree, I'm no arborist, but it really helps your view. And there's places like that that I've thought of. I thought about going all the way through like miles from my house and like tracking down the owners of these trees and just like, just throwing money at them mm. to top, mm. so I can top their trees. Well, just cut the tops right off. We did. We we did cut down uh, a few trees in that in that lot that we don't own. Uh, not because of the view. That's called brush clearance. That's a favor. You did uh, a favor. It was because we had been told by somebody who knew what they were talking about. It wasn't like an arborist, but he was like someone who had a good friend who was one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he was like that. Those trees are friend of the trees. Those trees are about to fall into the neighbor's yard. And also, it's a fire hazard, and so we were like, yeah, and we paid for it out of our pocket, and we tried to contact the owner of the lot, and he didn't get back to us, and so we just cut him down. Um, all right, yeah, that's another dilemma. Let us, let us know. I, I like the fact that we have this voicemail, and of course, now we're gonna listen to your voicemails after we talk about our new freaking party game. Yeah. We're still good. Now, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're really into games, especially me, I have a game night that I actually haven't reinstituted it yet. But well, now's the time pre pandemic so promote our game. I had your, a game to our night. Friends. I love getting people together and I love games. You know, it, it, Cards Against Humanity kind of started this whole craze of the party game that's not a complicated board game with rules and everybody's sitting around a table. It's not a tabletop game. It's a party game that's based on cards and tokens. And it's also just based on Taking a horrible scenario, which is actually just ridiculously hilarious, but a negative scenario, and putting a positive spin on it, and then picking the best positive spin. There are some cards, and it's not completely just a creative exercise. You get to like fill in the blank. It's incredibly fun. We've played it there's a couple two, of times. There's, there, there's two stages to yeah. each round, which makes it more fun and I think original. You can play in teams, you can you, play as an individual. You, you take a scenario that has a blank and then everybody submits one of the cards that they have acquired randomly and then the judge in each round decides to fill in the blank and make like this crazy negative situation. Right. And then everybody for the second phase of this round then has to put a positive spin on this crazy scenario once the blank has been filled in and the judge picks the person that, uh, picks the one they like the best. It could be like. It's fun. You The card could be, you just found out that in the middle of the night, your neighbor is blank. And you might get a card that says, shooting a beetle infested arrow at your biggest tree. And you're uh, like, that's we're really still not, good. Yeah, because I hated that tree. Because I love beetles. <laughs> My yeah. favorite band. You see, the Beatles are my favorite band. That would be a funny. That would yeah. Th- that's an example of one that might be chosen. So we're still good. He, he, just w- holding the box. I wish I had it right now. It's is just Im- satisfying. You can, you can imagine what it's it feels just like. satisfying to say there's a there's a physical game that we have developed that you can own and, and increase your mythicality. And if you get drunk in a cul-de-sac on a regular basis, it'd be real fun in a cul-de-sac while hammered. Let's listen to a voicemail. Yes. Hi there, guys. Yo. I have a very interesting, not roommate, but a neighbor story. So I live in an apartment 
college apartment. I'll try to make this pretty quick. Heard a loud noise outside. Looked outside. Someone smashed one of our lights. The girl across from me was confused. We were both confused to go back inside. My roommates then come home, and they're like, hey, someone's peeing in the damn hallway. So they're taking a piss in the hallway. I finally, I'm like, okay, this is enough. I come out there, and I'm like, hey, man, what are you doing? And immediately whips around at me. Lisi pulls his pants up beforehand. Good. Throws his shirt off as quick as he can, and pretty dang quickly is in my face, ready to fight me. Mm. Definitely much taller than me, much more built than me. And I'm like, oh, man, I didn't want to fight you. I just don't want you taking a pee in the hallway that I live in Reasonable. for obvious reasons. So and so it happens, a bunch of people come out and dissolve the issue. And, you know, it ended up working out in the end. I didn't have to fight the Jay Buckley, but pretty dang interesting story. And, yeah, they were very interesting to live with for the rest of that time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, because after that, this that big guy with his shirt on or off, you never know what you're going to get, is is he's still around. Obviously, he was under the influence of something. If you're going to pee in a hallway, it can't be your own. It can't be. I mean, it's still just to get that out of the way. There are there are circumstances in which pissing in a hallway is probably permitted. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know. I'm if I'm I'm just saying. Let's just say. Yeah, this, tell me one. This, <laughs> this scenario, I'm waiting. Okay, might be that uh, you're you're being held up. You know, like maybe you're being held up at gunpoint. Okay, you're being held hostage, and so in a in a hallway, and you never and know you how, have to pee. You, well, you never, after a while, you never know how. No, I'm saying that like a lot of people, if you point a gun at them, they they pee. You know what I'm saying? I've never had that happen to me. Well, I don't what know, about I don't being, know what I would do. being stuck in an elevator? You're gonna you're gonna pee in the corner, even though you know you got to stay there. And if you can get your tallywhacker out the uh, the the split of the elevator, you it'd be better to pee into the hall. This is a perfect situation. Then it starts going, and that thing clamps down. <laughs> No, you get everyone else in the elevator, because assuming you're not alone, to hold it open oh. just big enough for your tallywhacker to go out into the hall and pee, because that's what they want. They don't want you peeing inside the elevator that we're all stuck in. No, pee out into the hallway. <laughs> that would be acceptable. Who, who first, who transferred the terminology of tallywhacker to you? Because that, I got it from you. When we were when my, we were like kids, that's what uh, that's what my parents called it when they were growing up. Tallywhacker, yeah, tallywhacker. So they didn't. I'm saying so. A tally is when, when they like, were growing up. Not they didn't call they didn't call it a tallywhacker for me. We called it ding dong. Okay, yeah. It was always very confusing because I always thought somebody was at the door. Uh, but tallywhacker is what they called it in South Georgia way back in the day. And you know what I called it. From when I like stayed at like preschool, pre preschool, as early as I can remember. I, I yeah, I'm gonna when you say it, I'm gonna remember it. A pito. Yeah, that okay. Why somebody referred to it as that, and it kind of makes sense. You know, you're you're a preschooler. You don't have a third leg. You just have a eleventh toe. That you pee out of. That you pee out but of. But it sounds so much like something else. Pito. I mean, it's so I close to. I mean, P W E T O E. I mean, it's like if you know, you know, but if you don't, yeah, you might think it's pedo. I understand that now, but I didn't then. Thank God I didn't know what that was. But this back to the situation, I mean, this is this is ridiculous. First of all, when you approach somebody doing this, that that's a delicate situation because yeah. it's always like, Hey, buddy! Like you, hey. <laughs> it's like you gotta say you gotta like, say something. Approach with a bucket and just start catching it. Because I think there's Can some, I help? some people are like, but what? What the hell, dude? He took his shirt off immediately. I mean, that is that is what you're afraid is well, going to happen. He was an angry drunk. And why is he taking an, it? Why an, he don't want to get blood on his shirt? An angry that's an sloppy drunk. That's an intimidation move. There, it's like not only am I going to bow up and fight you, I'm going to take my shirt off first because all of the blood spatter from me just whooping you. Is not going to get on my shirt, Jack. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad it was, was diffused. But yeah, that's you never know what people are going to do, and you never know how they're going to respond if they're peeing in their own hallway. It's just you know, just chalk it up to having to clean it up later. I man. peed in a trash can one time when I um, sleepwalking. I I was barely awake. Yeah. Okay. And I was also a child. So I had. Um, some roommates in my first apartment ever. 
that um, I had known from my previous year of college. I met them on campus, and we were good buddies. We had hung out outside of class plenty of times. These seemed like normal, well-adjusted people. Okay. Um, uh. They ended up believing that our first floor apartment was haunted okay. because they heard footsteps. Okay. It's a college apartment complex, and there were plenty of people up walking around but they might have been ghosts during the middle yeah, those, of the they night sound different right partying or otherwise um and this escalated to a point where i what? i came home after a weekend away with my now husband and they had drawn charcoal pentagrams on the walls and the doors um <laughs> because they quote felt a presence unquote well, so that was, yeah, that was my first roommate experience and my last. <laughs> no more roommates after that. See, there's, you kind of got to approach this with a little bit of sensitivity because this is, I mean, this could be a, a, a religious slash spiritual exercise. This could be a personal belief set. And I'm not, I'm not one to say that, I, I'm not ready to say that ghosts don't exist, and I'm not ready to say what pentagrams will do to them. But I do understand that if it was me, I would be like, uh, I don't want, I don't consider pentagrams to be like a part of my feng shui. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could take, you could go for like the decorative route. Yeah, it's like, like let's go, yeah. we need to go in a different non pentagram direction well, and with the just, motif here. How about let's just not do charcoal on the walls. Charcoal then, is semi-permanent or is totally washable? If it was Sharpie. I think it depends on if we're talking about an eggshell or a flat paint. Well, I got another podcast for that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, yeah, I listened to your dad talk all, my wife and I were listening to Dispatches from Myrtle Beach <laughs> and he was talking about eggshell and satin, you know, and gloss and yeah. I was completely on Charles's side about this, about how you want to use an eggshell in a bathroom and not a gloss. And Jesse, who's, you know, she's a designer, she has these opinions and mm -hmm. she was like, Oh, I like to uh, oh, I like to do a, a I like a gloss in the in the in the bathroom. I was like, ah, too shiny. Shows too many imperfections. And, you, and that eggshell you You're not gonna be happy with it. Um Yeah, so anyway, uh, I, I do I do defer she's to She's got dad beef on that. with my dad? They're no. gonna have to face off. No, she didn't completely disagree with him, but she's just done in a well constructed bathroom where the sheetrock work was was high quality. Sometimes that extra sheen gives a, a, a you know makes you feel a little more alive. Well, my my dad has gotten good over the years of uh, navigating women in his life who disagree with him. Yeah, yeah, that's his job. You know, he 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 learns to be quiet. And uh, I'm not talking about clients. I'm just talking about just relationships. That's what he told me. He learned to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> so he'd probably just let her win. Most things resolve themselves without saying anything. That's what he's telling me. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is a tough one because, yeah, I mean, first of all, depending on your, you know, your religious disposition, it seems like a pentagram might invite, if you're already believing in the supernatural of some some sort. Not ghosts, but demons. Yeah, with the pentagram, you may be inviting something more sinister into the situation. I don't know enough about it to, to tell you one way or another, but it seems like that's maybe, it's like, hey, it, you know, how about just do the cross on the, <laughs> let's do a cross on the, <laughs> on, on the, on the door. Right, you, you there, know? there has to, if there's a clash of personal beliefs here, then there's, you gotta figure out a way to I work it. I think you gotta, yeah, you gotta figure out like, what is the overall religious disposition of the house? We gotta be on the same team here in order to deal with these spirits in the way that we we think is going to be effective, I don't know. This is that kind of reminds me of the uh, I don't remember many of the details, but you know, Kiko told us about the story of the haunted. Yeah, but they were they everyone in the house was kind of undeniably on the same page. Like they, well, I mean, they kind of in denial about it. No, they they were they were they all were like, yes, yeah, something's going on here. There was agreement actually, from what I remember. Yeah. I think you have to join, if you want everyone to be dealing with these spirits in the same way, you have to join a coven where you all think the same thing. Or, or a Bible study. 
I think you know, that's, like you got you have to pick you got to pick your side, and then you and then when you, you're talking about a roommate, that's like how do you like? She was trying to ascertain like, is this person? Do I vibe with this person? Oh, I mean, the way she put it was like, is this person like normal? <laughs> you know, I she didn't say the word normal. I can't remember what she said, but you know what I'm saying. So if you want to like get at somebody's like spiritual beliefs, that, I mean. You can clash about anything in a roommate situation, but how do you ask that? Because that that's not a fair question when you're trying to find a roommate, or is it? Well, I think that isn't that illegal? To me, it probably is. But the, to me, the specific situation is: we believe there are spirits in this home, and we are taking the following actions. Which it's not like, hey, inside my room, I've got some sage and some other stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. If it's or even going around communal the areas. Well, even taking sage around like the perimeter of your home, or like that's not necessarily offensive. But the the pentagram is it's a decorative. It, like you said, it's a it's a decorative decision <laughs> that says something about this house. And if that's not something that everybody agrees with, ah, we got we have a problem. Yeah, and maybe you gotta consult the the spirits too. I live on a ground floor apartment and above me there is a family with two very, very rowdy children. Mm. Um, I work from home, uh, which is great, I love it, um, but it is extremely hard when there are two uh, three to five year olds running back and forth legitimately Yikes. all day from about 5 a.m. to 11 to 12 at night. What? They are running back and forth all the time. And it is distracting. I've gotten used to it, but when guests come over, they're like, how do you sleep? How do you exist in this? And it's capitalism, baby. Um, but I, when <laughs> I was playing um, video games one night on the Switch. I was up, I was moving, um, and they were playing outside the apartment. And again, I live on the ground floor. Um, and they started banging on the window going, are you dancing? Um, and it ruined my life. So... I now hate children, and I never want to live in a ground floor apartment again. Are you dancing? <laughs> Are you dancing? Because that's what we do from 5 a.m. until 11 p.m. Yeah, we give these kids a better bedtime. That's tough, man, when you've got people above you. The, I mean, when we had our apartment in college, that was the last time I lived with people above me. And it's, boy, that, that, mm, you, you really got. You, you had somebody that. above you when, in the apartment that we moved into uh, when we first moved to California. You weren't on the top floor. That's true. I was on the That's top right, floor out here. I didn't have anybody above me. I don't recall it being a problem. That I was. I think it was a thicker. Uh, it all depends on the nature building. of the. In L.A., a lot of the apartment complexes uh, have concrete floors in between. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe just because of like earthquakes and stuff. But it really doesn't end up being a big deal. Don't but say you, the e word. Oh, you think I'm going to incite one? Yeah. Uh, but we're going to have to put up. What what's the what's the pentagram equivalent for keeping earthquakes away? Um, I don't believe there is one. If there was, can, Christy would have found it. They can shoot some like foam into the ground or something. Shock absorbers. <laughs> um, yeah. This is this is so tough because. I think people are protective of their kids. You know, if you're trying to talk to them about their kids, it's like, well, isn't they're just a bundle of joy? Well, it's it's very difficult because in certain situations, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing anything that is uh, abnormally loud. If the if the if the if the ceilings if the floors are really thin, kids being kids, man. But now if just if the, these kids, there's a, the core problem is just. The, it's just kids. If the kids are, maybe they're training for something. I don't know, maybe they're gonna be in like the Junior Olympics. There's nothing you can do. And like, if a kid asks me if I'm dancing, you can't let that ruin your life. You just can't. You can't let anything a kid does, oh man. I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know what the solution is. Yeah, uh, I, we feel your pain. Maybe, maybe we just need to acknowledge how difficult this is. It's like, I hear, that this is tough for you. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry that you have to put up with this. I think I have a solution, and I'm not saying this okay. is a, this is a foolproof solution. But I honestly Which is believe basically means you're, it's not. No, well, foolproof means that they would be quiet all of a sudden. That would be foolproof. Would be we got to get rid of these kids, and that's not what I'm advocating. Mm. 
Um, if you have not yet had a conversation with the people above you about the nature of the noise, you need to have a conversation. I'm not gonna dictate what you should say, but simply having a conversation adds a new factor into the situation from the parent's perspective, which then is translated to the children's perspective. And that is, oh, when you guys run around, the woman who lives below us hears it, and I can imagine that that's annoying. So now I'm thinking about that. But if if, if this family is up there just operating com- in complete ignorance, ignorance about the amount of noise they're making, th- there's no buffer at all. But if you know there's somebody below you, it'd be like, oh, okay, you guys are running around at 5 a.m. Hey, guys, remember? There's people below us. It's not gonna change everything, but it's gonna take the edge off. Yeah, and you I- You gotta have that conversation. I think if there's some sort of, well, you. You you get you take a gift basket up there, and it's got a toy for each kid and a big pair of really padded slippers <laughs> yeah. for everyone. Um, Can you wear these big feet foot? Yeah, big feet shoes. Definitely a very quiet quiet toys for the kids because you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by giving them something loud. But then you're like, it's a gesture of positivity. It's um, what's it called when you give something nice? To uh, somebody. I would have known before I got COVID brain. This is the kind of thing I can't remember anymore when somebody, you can't a peace hide, offering. You can't hide, yes, you can't hide behind that the rest of your life, man. Yeah, You're just well, getting stupid. And that never happened to me before. I'm telling you. Okay. Peace offering. It's there, it just takes longer to get to. Um, I'm rebuilding neural networks. And then you just give them a, you just have a little conversation. It's like, but you have to say, you're not asking for them to be quiet at all times. You're just asking for like, I don't know, is it like, What's the, you work at home, it's really difficult. If you figure out something that you feel like is a reasonable yet open-ended request for um, an awareness and a little sensitivity. Yeah. It's tough, man. It is tough. Hi, my name is Tanisha. I live in Atlanta. Um, I've been listening to Ear Biscuits and watching GMM since you guys first started, I have followed you guys across the U.S. I love you guys. I love everybody. You guys are awesome. But so responding to oh. the um, bad neighbor thing, um, my bad neighbor experience, I live in some apartments, and I had a neighbor who insisted on having um, adult fun times huh. very loudly in their living room. That's fine, except... Um, our front doors are French doors, and they didn't have curtains. So when I would walk to my apartment and I had to pass their apartment to get to my apartment, um, I would get a show every evening. Even though I didn't want that show, I still got that show. So one day I happened to mention to Every evening. Well, they consistent. got the show. Every freaking evening? Well, like, and not just through a window, but through like two French doors, doors f- full of glass. Man. To them, hey, I got these really awesome curtains on my front door, and they were very offended that I um, mentioned that to them and told them, um, or kind of hinted at, we don't want to see your show um, every night. And it was like for two hours, which is amazing, but it's an absolute no. So anyway, that's my story. They eventually moved out after a month, but a, a lot of people complained. Um, okay. But that's my story. Love you guys. Okay, before we Love get into too. the solution of uh, what you do about this, I just gotta, I gotta figure this situation out. We got a couple, who's essentially, they're exhibitionists, right? Because you know that somebody's watching you. You know that you can be seen. This isn't something that you accident. Oh, we didn't realize that we were in the living room so every doing night this for on purpose. two hours. Two hours. Uh, now, first of all, two hours every night? You know what, they need to get a television. What, what kind of medication is this guy on? They need to get like a laptop or something. You need to start streaming things, it's like. Well, that's my theory, is that they were, okay? So I think that. Oh, oh, they I, were streaming I things. I think this may have been a cam couple, okay? Okay. Uh, and I think that the living room provided the best lighting and scenery, which is an important choice when you're making independent porn. But curtains. She mentioned curtains. But when you are making porn and you're good at it and you know it 
And any dude who can, who, can, who can go for two hours. Not considerate. I'm just saying. You're not getting paid by your neighbors. I know, but I'm just saying it's part of the spirit of it. If you're, if you're broadcasting it to thousands of people at once, uh, well, what, what, what does a couple more neighbors matter? I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to get inside the, That's the, a good theory. the head space. Yeah. I'm just saying there's something, these are professional Especially because sex havers. multiple people complained to the point where they moved out. It wasn't just her. If you're having sex for two hours every single night, this is your job. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that- It you definitely can, makes me feel better I don't to come to that conclusion. I don't think that you can have a job <laughs> right, and then have sex for two hours every night. You'd be too bow-legged. <laughs> I mean, you could be a cowboy. Depends on which one you are, I guess. Um, so first of all, I do think, that's my assessment of the situation, is that there was a webcam that you couldn't see. Uh, so really, the thing that you could have gotten them on is the technicality about operating a business in the apartment complex. <laughs> that would have been the proper way to account for that. Man. Now, I gotta say, uh, I've stayed in a couple of apartments, or a couple of hotels in, in Manhattan, where you get that situation where you are now looking into like an apartment complex or a hotel across the way. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And it gets dark and some people close the curtains and some people don't. Mm -hmm. And there's been a number of times uh, when not out of intention, but just out of happenstance, be like, oh, there's a couple that looks like they might be about to make love. Yeah. Um, and I, I've never seen anybody make love. I think there was one time I did see somebody making love through one of those like sheer curtains where you could sort of see bodies moving, but it couldn't make out any details. Are you getting it confused with the time that you and I both are like, what are they doing over there? And then we figured out they were playing cornhole inside their apartment. Well, that was one of them, but not, not, I know that was just one, one instance, which I'm just raising a which question. Which that was why. I'm raising a question right now. And I, and I have a feeling that we probably have a difference of opinion on this. No, I would I would look. You would? But I wouldn't talk about it on this podcast. But like, is it? I'm I just, don't wanna be judged for that. I'm just asking the question. If a couple is making love and you can see it through a window and it's obvious that they, it's not like, oh, we forgot to close the window, you know? Well, I, I don't know how it would be obvious, but I don't, honest, I'm just being honest. It's never happened, but maybe I would, Maybe I would uh, look look a little bit. Well, well, there was one time that Jesse and I were staying in a hotel, and my wife, um, my wife, <laughs> uh, likes to you know draw the curtains. You know, I, I, I yeah, okay, I don't. And I and I told, and we were in New York, I think, at some place where there was there was another building across the way, and I was like. Let's just leave them open and give people a show. I le I legitimately said, you said that. give them a show. Give them a show. You saw them. No, I was like, if you start screwing in a window, not in the window, but like, <laughs> if you start screwing in a in a in a bedroom that has a window, and in in and, and there's, don't do it up against the window because you don't you don't want that thing to. I'm just fall saying, out. there was a part of me that I was like, I feel like maybe it's a hell there, of a way to go though. There's a part of me that's a little exhibitionist because I thought to myself. It would be fun to, it's fun, watch, it's fun to watch people have sex. There's a reason that people watch porn. It's fun to watch people having sex. <laughs> and if you can be a part of that in a non-professional way, but just sort of like, oh, we forgot to close the window, just every once in a while, I think that's a beautiful part of humanity. Uh, but this situation that this woman was dealing with is, is, you di can't is different. It, but you can't force it on people. Like, to me, it comes down to like, this window needs to stay open because I paid for this room with a view and I like I like to look at views while I'm sorting the mail. Mm. I do. It's part of it. Like I don't look I don't look away from Christy the whole time, but I might glance away and say, Wow. I mean, I like wow. I like making love in places where the I city can city that never sleeps. I can see there the it view <laughs> while it's happening. Like there's you know, it's like it's fun. That's Understood. fun. That's part of it. Understood. I've never, and so that's my main motivation. And it's so far away from other people that like- They can't, they cannot, they can't tell who you are. It's, you're not imposing. They can look away, they can draw their curtains, they can- What are their legal ramifications though? But it's so far away that you're small. Are there legal ramifications? I mean, could you, what about children watching? Well, that's what I'm asking. 
Is there, uh, again. I don't want no children watching. Is there a law? For the record. Is there a law against when, uh, o- open, win- you know, open window screwing? It, it, that's a good question. Like, is it okay? Like, what if you did Do it I right up against Google the it? window? What if you had your butt cheeks spread right up against the window? Is that wrong? I mean, I'm not asking if it's wrong. Is it illegal? Is there a point in which it becomes illegal? How do I g- because if you go to a park and pull your tallywhacker out, you'll get arrested for indecent exposure. But if you're in the privacy of your own home and you pull your tallywhacker out and people can see you across the way. Is it a crime? to have sex with the windows open. Hey, I love the fact that we've got this. Public sex laws in California. Okay, that's so where we're, we're at. We're in the liberalist of states. Penal code <laughs> <laughs> 647A makes it a crime, no, quote, no. to engage in or to solicit anyone to engage in. Jenna's Luke, over here nodding her head like, she, you already knew this or you were just looking it up? Okay. Engage in lewd or dissolute conduct in any public place really? or in any place open to the public or exposed to public view. You can't, well, okay. I just said I was all about Cause, committing cause, a crime. Because you didn't think it was public sex when it was in your private place. But when the windows are open, it is. Wow, what about New York though? Because that's where I do my public sex. Okay. I, don't, I do it only in Manhattan. I don't do it in Los Angeles. So I'm just gonna and for the record, I have not done it. I've only had discussions. If if uh, if the FBI is listening to this, because I know it would immediately be a federal case if if I was caught having sex in a in a window. Is it a crime to have sex in a car in New York? Oh, is it? You are charged with a misdemeanor. Oh, okay. you're not going to go to jail, but I you, can handle a misdemeanor. But you don't want to end up with a criminal record for life. But yeah, but in the job interview, it's like, have you ever been arrested? Well. I don't know why they're asking. Let me about tell you. Car sex. I'm I had sex about. in a car. Are you not going to hire me because of that? I had sex. I put my butt cheeks right up against a window in Manhattan. Um, that sounds. Well, what different. do I that search? Feels Law different. sex with curtains open, NYC. <laughs> sex in your own home laws. Yeah, I feel like man, you should be able to do it because they because. It's not like people are like up against the window with their eyes taped open. You know what I'm saying? They've got the ability. I think we should advocate for this law to be changed. If it is indeed illegal to have sex with the windows open in Manhattan, I believe that, um, I believe we should we should advocate against this law. I don't think this is the hill I'm gonna die on. No, I'm, I'm moving to Manhattan. I need, I'm gonna be there long enough to become a city council member and this is my campaign. Jenna, what'd you find? because there's also the peeping Tom law that it's illegal to peek in a door or window on a private property without consent of the owner. Peeping Tom law, it's illegal to peep in a what? In a door or window. In a door or window property, on private without property of the owner. So without the consent. Your it's illegal to. And are looking in yeah. while you're doing it, they are in trouble. Yeah, yeah, if the they're pe- on your property. The peeping Tom thing is, again, I, the peeping Tom thing obviously is a, is a different thing in my mind because that's clearly just like an invasion of someone's privacy. I'm talking about somebody. If you get a good lawyer, and we have them, we can get off. I'm just talking, get off? <laughs> I, I mean, think if you get off on someone's watching, then it break. that's breaking the law. Is, I'm talking about maybe this, just foreplay, and then you close the curtain. I, I need to be prepared for this conversation. The fact that we're having it unprepared to me makes me a little uncomfortable. Yeah. But I will say, um, someone asked, on AVO, which is a lawyer directory. I don't know how legit this is, so that's my disclaimer. I walk around my home nude sometimes. I usually keep shades closed, but I did not close them and neighbor saw me naked. I was not having sex or touching myself, nothing sexual, I just was cooking breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a euphemism for anything. <laughs> I looked out my window and there she was. Just feel like I'm in my own home. I did not intend for her to see. And one attorney answered, a prosecutor could charge you with indecent exposure if someone is able to see you nude while they are in a public place. Don't do it. Yeah, it there's a there's a bit of oh, courtesy okay. here. I mean, maybe I'm just I'm, I'm a live I'm a live free kind of guy, you know. D- don't yeah, don't do it in a way that people can 
can see you. You know, that's not if if you're doing it to exhibit, then you're being an. Then that's. I think that crosses. We line. recently had a friend tell us that the idea of being comfortable with nakedness, and I mean non-sexual nakedness, I mean like roommates who may walk around naked, yeah, was a Southern thing. Do you remember this? I uh, yeah. Did I, you agree with I, this assessment? I didn't agree, and I but I didn't want to. I I didn't want to argue it because I think he might have a point. You think I'm, it's a Southern thing to be naked? I know of multiple people, and this is gonna sound nuts, literally. I know of multiple people who say that growing up, their dad would just be naked in the house. All right. And and, and I don't mean that's like, oh, going from the shower to get dressed. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. dad is in the living room watching sports. That's weird. Naked. That's odd. I'm not saying I advocate for nope, it. No, you don't. You, the only I, thing I'm I wouldn't be a friend. The only thing I'm, I'm advocating for, to, just to, on the record, is that it should be okay to have sex in Manhattan while you're in a hotel with your partner on vacation or multiple partners. I'm not who, hey, whatever you want to do, because people have the ability to close the curtains on the other side. That's wanna, the only thing I'm advocating for. I think I want to table this as potentially a whole episode. A whole episode. <laughs> um, Just a minute ago, you well, were uncomfortable with it. And now you want to do a whole episode about it? Because then I can be prepared, and we can get emails from people. Lawyers. Like, well, like, oh, well, we can get voicemails from people all over the place. It's like, are you in the South? And did your somebody in your family were they like naked all the time, and was it just part of it? Like, how I do think you? It's the, it's the, how do you deal with nakedness? It's just the weather. You know, I, back in the day, I said the moment of nakedness should be minimized. I don't know where I stand. I got to figure this out. But let's hear a few more no voicemails problem. on this subject matter. Warning: We're getting into the poop zone. Good. Hi guys, I saw your tweet about bad neighbor horror stories, so I wanted to tell you about my old neighbors, we'll call them Jim and Joette. Joette. Jim and Joette had 250 pound Newfoundlands that used to do sh on our lawn pretty constantly, and we would ask them to stop or pick up their dogs, and they never would. Mm. So one Classic. day on a particularly cold night after all of their dogs had frozen in our yard, my oh. dad picked up every single Newfoundland that was in our yard, and put it in a grocery bag on their porch. Their dogs never sh in our yard again. Wow. I Did he light it? I love your And dad. knock on the door? First That's of all. That's great. Common, this is classic. This person sounds like they come from a place where sh is not a curse word. Like Or is it, is it at least their favorite word? You know, I just love the way they say sh Yeah, it's very percussive. Uh, this New, is this you, is great. Do you know about these dogs, Newfin, Newfoundland dogs? Um, Two hundred fifty yeah. pounds. That's a bunch of. Shit. Yeah, that's a that's a big old. Shit. Again and again and again. But the, hey, that's I think you have a conversation. Yeah, they 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 didn't respond. You got to take it up a level. It's like hey, here look look at the volume of this. Here it is. Do with it what you want. But the thing that I don't like is having to put signs in your yard. Don't poop here. Like as cute as they get. All throughout our neighborhood, where I walk my dogs, you know, I, I, I will clean up my dog's dookies. Yes. If it's in. And you won't do it because it, of it, a sign. If it's in a prominent part of the yard. You're not doing it because of a sign, you're doing it because you're a responsible, courteous person. But I don't like using the bags, so what I'll do is, I'll usually take it and I'll like, I'll find some natural stuff like leaves and. <laughs> what? And rocks, and I will, I'll pick up the poop using these natural elements, and then I'll throw all of that into like a more unlandscaped area. Whoa, 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 oh, okay. No, 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 man. And then I did it this morning. Oh, no, no, you, you're part of the problem. And then. You're this, you're on the wrong end of this. You're the, you're the guy with the big dogs. I don't leave a shit in someone's. You throw it into a more landscaped area? Not landscaped, a more a less landscaped area, like a rustic area, like a more wooded, unkempt, unlandscaped area. You don't know what's going on in the area. I mean, and sometimes I'll bury it. What do you what's what, what's the problem with the bags? I don't like carrying a bag around on my do dog's walk. It's like Okay, okay. Well, and uh, this is what uh, I uh, No, there's a solution here. If the pro, I thought you had some environmental issue, like you were like, I don't like plastic bags, and I was gonna say, A, 
you can get the compostable like biodegradable bags. I have bags. those. Second thing, and is, I was carrying them. Second thing, I just is, didn't want to use it. You, you, you can choose to do. There's three things that you can do. Option number one is what you don't want to do, which I don't disagree. Which is carry a warm poop bag all the way back to your house. Okay. You, yeah. Then you're the bitch. Okay. <laughs> Option number two, which I believe is much less offensive than what you've chosen as option number three, is just put it in somebody's trash can. Uh, there were no trash cans out. Oh, you can always find somebody's trash no, can. No, uh-uh. You can My, always find somebody's trash can. And that might lead to a, that might lead yeah, but I'm to, walking a, around, to an uncomfortable conversation. I'm walking around just looking for a trash can You now. can't put some dog sh in a, in a rustic area. You can't do that. Some people, some people, their rustic areas are their favorite parts of the yard. Some people's children play hide and seek and they go in the bushes. That's the best place to hide them when you're doing a good hide and seek game. You got these kids that you want to be outside getting the fresh air and they're in their favorite hiding spot and all of a sudden there's some shit that's got some bark, leaves, and rocks mixed in <laughs> because you tried to hide it. Yeah. This is the situation I, that you're creating. I hid Jade shit and then I'm running around the corner and here's Jasper like in the street. Yeah, that sounds and, like something and, Jasper and would do. And all of the, everything around me was too landscaped. I think if the dog shits in the middle of the street, you can leave it. No, that's 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 just that's where people walk. That's where people drive. I and so I had to resort to using the bag. And then I got to a certain point and I said, you know what? I'm going to leave this bag here because I know I'm coming back. And then, but I'm not going to forget this bag. You left the bag in the street. I left the bag. On the in a in a certain spot where I knew I was going to turn the corner and come back home. You did temporary litter. Yeah, temporarily I. This littered. is so wrong. And but I did remember it. How about tying the bag around your dog's collar so they have to deal with it? So they'll think twice about it next time. And it was because the trash cans weren't out that day. Okay. I don't uh, know. I, listen, I'm putting myself out there. At least you don't have a Newfoundland. Okay, so I. This roommate is way worse than this story is, but this is the, this is like funny bad as opposed to just like, holy crap bad. Okay. Um, she had a cat and he was very sweet, but she was not good at taking care of him. And she tried to convince us that it was normal that he would like to poop in the shower and there was nothing we could do to stop that other than leave two inches of water in our bathtub all, at all times. A poop pool? We did that for a year. It sucked. And it didn't stop him from pooping outside the litter box. And she did nothing about it. Ooh, that's bad. Oh, so they put the water in, the, in, in there so he would stop doing it. Yeah, and then he just started pooping other places. I think it's cool that the cat takes a shower though. I don't necessarily know if that's what was happening. Mm. Um, crapping in the shower. Yeah, there's, there's there's not a positive spin to this. I mean, if that were in our game, we're still good. <laughs> well, we no, some, no, you can do yeah, it. Yeah, this one. would actually be a good thing. Yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my cat poops in the shower, but we're still good because I take, I don't, I don't shower. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my bathroom. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. Um, Wow, this, this you got is interesting. To, you got to have responsibility for your pets and you have to find a solution. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't have to know the solution to know that it's your responsibility to find the solution, period. This is definitely a roommate relationship ending scenario. Yeah, if you don't, scenario. If, yeah, if you're, not, if you're not solving the problem. I think there's just something about, um, one of the things that a lot of these things have in common is, an inability to put yourself in your roommate's shoes and just think like the other person's shoes in general. Right. What would it be like if I was them and their cat- I wouldn't care about it, you know. Uh, was pooping everywhere. I mean, it is a shower. All you gotta do is take the nozzle down and just like blast it down the drain. Yeah, sure. And if there are people like that who that's the way they think, then you just don't be their roommate. Yeah, Let you, them live with other people who have Gets. I haven't listened to this one yet, but based on just like the header above it, I think this one gets worse than the last one. 
Hello there, Rhett and Link. This is the subject, my roommate crapped in the middle of the room. I was using the restroom. Uh, we want to have a one restroom apartment kind of complex. Um, and as I was using it, I walked back out and I smelled a smelly smell that smells smelly. And it smelled like a fresh deuce, <laughs> to put it lightly. And I'm like, what's that smell? And he just kind of looked at me and was like, oh, uh, I'd use the restroom. And I'm like, you had to use the restroom? Like, where at? And he's like, oh, I just did it in here. And this is just a one room only room, you know, other than the, the bathroom that I was in. And I like had a horrified look on my face. I'm like, where did you use it? And I all I had to do was just look down and I saw a a towel he used and and I just I was in this Okay, this one isn't over, but I've heard enough. You know, I, I I've heard hold enough. On, I was on the edge of my seat. I, I don't want to hear a towel involved. I I've, I don't want to hear any more. There's no way out of this. Break up now. E eviction. Grounds for eviction. Well, but can we just go back to the cat? Well, I have another cat one. Well, let's just forget that even no, happened. No, because this is a situation. Okay, this is a situation. You think this gets better? I'll keep playing it. No, no, you don't have to keep. I'm saying I'll keep playing it. If you've got to take, if you're in a place that's got one bathroom and two people got to shit at the same time, what do you do? Because I haven't had this situation personally, but I have good friends who have had this situation well, you multiple get, times. You, you don't go on the floor, right? You go in something. Well, I have, on something. I have one friend in a in a grocery bag who was a, with his father, and they were in a motel situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, they got back. It's you know when you've been out and you're like with your dad or with and you're just with one other person. You get back to the hotel room and you both got to take a shit. Yeah. The older you get, the more often this happens. And then you got to say, well, who's got to take a shit more? Because that person wins. And right. sometimes it's like, well, I got to go more, but you're typically a quick. Shit. My wife shit faster than I do. Let's just be. Let's just put it out there. So she usually gets to go first if we run into this situation. Okay. I'm just a tall man. I think my intestines are long or something. <laughs> but this guy got into a situation where he won the battle, so he's he's on the toilet, and his dad's like, I gotta do this. And so he went and he leaned over into the bathtub and shit into the bathtub. Like a cat. Just like a cat would do. <laughs> this to this me is, is acceptable. Trash can because you got porcelain, you know, you're 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 shit into a porcelain container that's got water, it's easily washable. Yeah. Now you're related, and so it's you're seeing your dad leaning his ass over a edge of a bathtub is different than you're just roommate. That I don't know how close these people were, but you and if they're southern, but <laughs> you, but you got like you got trash cans, you've got sinks. There, I feel like I can you gotta pretty be quickly go, go through the hierarchy of where you go after you can't get to the toilet in yeah. the first place. Is not a towel in the living room, okay? Yeah, that's no. disqualifying. I think you just you take their name off the lease if they do that. All right, let's wrap it up with just let's go back to cats. Let's <laughs> okay. just. Uh... Hey boys, hey. I'm calling with my uh, bad roommate horror story. I lived for a short period of time with an older lady and her two cats who were also older. Um, one of them unfortunately passed away from old age. She was well into her 20s. Wow, Whoa. And uh, my roommate wasn't quite sure what to do, so she cleared all of my food out of the refrigerator, put her dead cat in a shoebox, and kept it in the refrigerator until she could figure it out. Uh, uh. And then lived there for long after that. Uh, uh. Refrigerator or freezer? Because there is a difference. She said fridge, man. Hey, she cleaned the food out first. Uh uh. Did it fit in a drawer? Would you put it in the fruit drawer or the <laughs> the, the fresh drawer? You yeah, gotta keep yeah. that thing it, fresh. I think you put it in the meat drawer. You gotta put it in the fresh yeah, drawer until we figure it out. You put it where the bacon goes. Figure what out? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna get it stuffed? Yeah, it's like I mean you shouldn't put it in the freezer. I just need some time to figure this out. <laughs> Oh gosh, <laughs> is, this is so disturbing. Oh. oh, poor, poor, this is just a, 
this is just a sad, sad story. I mean, do you, how do you, what's the, I mean, it was in a box, but still. But not a bag? I know. Cause you, I mean, I feel like I could be like, I, I feel like if you really are gonna, if you need to put your cat in a fridge, first of all, put it in the freezer. Second of all, put it in a bag. Third of all, and tie it up. Lie about what it is. You know what I'm saying? Put a label like, on what it. What'd you put in there? Oh, uh, my cousin went halibut fishing in in Canada. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't know when I'm gonna get to that halibut. You just, you, you, is, there's just so many other ways around this. I wonder how she found out. Did she like, where's my food? It's box. And then she she's peeking in the box, you know? That is a shocking moment. Oh gosh. But you know, if if the cat's 20 and like it's an, you know, it's an elderly roommate, it's like, I mean, you, the yeah. older you get, the more leeway you get you with like some sympathy refrigerating for sure. your cats. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how it was rectified, but. Oh my goodness. Is that what you wanna end on? I guess we're ending on that one, dude. That's okay. it. All that right. is, man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the people I live with, I can say anything I need to say to them, they can say anything they need to say to me. And we're, and we're pretty much, we don't align and agree on everything, but oh, we can we can work through it. That is the common thread. Woo! That is the common thread in all these situations. We stress on a regular basis. Communication is key. You got to keep those communication lines open, especially if somebody's got an elderly cat and a propensity to place it in the fridge after it dies. If you if you're talking on a regular basis before that happens, then maybe it won't happen. You know, just That's right. Yeah, just keep talking to your roommates, and if your roommates won't talk to you. And they're doing weird stuff. You know what? Just keep an eye on that lease end date. Uh huh. And figure out a new situation if you can. All right, I got a wreck for you. You can end with something to listen to on your own time. Uh, a while back, I tweeted, "How did I get here?" And I put a screenshot of my Spotify where I was. L l it was just the lyrics were all Icelandic, and I was listening to this Icelandic uh. folk pop. That, and I didn't know how I got to it. But then I realized there was some English and there's this, it's, an, it's the same artist that I tweeted called Asgir, Asgir. It's A with some sort of symbol over it, S-G-E-I-R. And the song that you gotta listen to, I'm obsessed with this song, King and Cross. It's just like, the 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 way that it transitions sounds like a '90s Christian song. Just so you know, it's from 2013. Uh, his album "In the Silence." So yeah, I've, I've been sleeping on this Icelandic folk guy. Those Icelanders will they'll they'll do some stuff. King and Cross is an amazing song. It like has this unexpected like it goes into a different gear, and the way that it does is just. It's just very interesting. We got a tempo change. It's 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 a it, yeah it's a tempo change, but it's like I you know I just love the transition from the verse to the bridge and of this thing. You you have to listen to it to to know what I'm talking about. King and Cross as gear. I'm a it's my it's, okay. It's the song that I'm obsessed with right now. I'll have to check it out, and you will too. Uh, thank you for all these voicemails. That we, was fun. We're gonna keep asking you to send us uh, messages and stories. And you know what you can always do? You don't have to wait for us to do a specific prompt. If you've got a question, an observation, something that you want to say about ear biscuits or something you'd like to hear us talk to, you know, talk about, just leave a message. We one, listen to them all. 888-EARPOD1. Hey, yeah. Hashtag ear biscuits too. See you next week. Hi, Ear Biscuits. Um, I'm staying anonymous here, but I want to preface this by saying I know that this is not her fault in any way. Um, she couldn't control this, but my freshman year of college, I got assigned randomly to a dorm with a girl who had frequent night terrors. And so she would wake up um, around three in the morning, almost every night, screaming, bloody murder and would get up and run across the room she would go jiggle the door handle and scream no 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 and then she would just walk back to bed and keep sleeping and i had to deal with that for an entire school year 
And I know it's not her fault, but it was a horror for me to witness. Hello, Rhett and Link. This is David, long-time listener, first-time caller. So I have a quick horror story about my former roommate. Um, I lived with them for about seven months, and during that entire seven months, they never once ever washed their towel that they used for showers. Um, I would see them frequently using it as a hand towel and blowing their nose and after a shower. So after like seven months of just months and months of just grime and mildew and filth, he finally, finally, finally decided to just throw it away instead of washing it. Hey, Brett and Link. My name is Ashley from Oregon, and my bad neighbor story is that years ago, I slipped on the sidewalk outside of my apartment and injured my foot. As I was lying there crying in pain, my neighbor came running out. I thought he was going to help me, but instead he hovered his hands over my foot and insisted that he was healing me. Needless to say, it didn't work, and I actually had broken my foot in multiple places. Love all that you guys do. Bye. Hey, in case you missed it, we launched a new collection over at psych.la. Everything we release over there, all the products and apparel, change right before your eyes, so check it out. And we're giving you a discount code to use on your first visit. Shop psych.la, drop in EB Made You Look at checkout and enjoy 10% off your whole purchase. EB Made You Look. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.